talk to you about absolute value functions. Um, <clears throat> notice that I've highlighted this uh, or made this red V here on the board. Uh, that's because every absolute value function should have some shape of the, of the letter V, either a normal looking V or possibly upside down. All right, the first thing we want to take a look at is how can we create the, uh, the graph of an absolute value function? Well, the first thing I want to look at is the idea of the parent function. Now, a parent function is just your normal, just your normal function, f of x. It's, uh, the only thing going on there is the function that we're, we're interested in. In this case, it's the absolute value. All right? <clears throat> to take a look at how this graph is formed, let's first uh, go back to the, uh, the, the most traditional way of creating a graph, and that's making an x, y table, and picking numbers to plug in for x, and figuring out what we get for y. And then graphing those. Let's start with uh, plugging. Let's plug a negative three in for x. Well, let's see here. If I do f at negative three, then that would be the absolute value of negative three. So the answer is three. So when x is negative three, y is three. If I plug a negative two in for x, again I get f at negative two equals absolute value of negative two is two. So when x is negative two, y is two. Plug a negative one in for x. As you can see, I'm going to get a 1 for y. If I plug a 0 in for x, I get an absolute value of 0 is 0. And if I plug a 1 in for x, I still get 1. And let's do one more point, or actually two more points. A 2 in for x, the absolute value of 2 is 2. And a 3 for x, the absolute value of 3 is 3. So now I've got this set of ordered pairs. If I came over and I graphed these, the first point on my graph is left 3, up 3, so there's that first point. Then the left 2, up 2 is right here. Left 1, up 1, 0, 0. Right 1, up 1. Right 2, up 2, and right 3, up 3. As you can see from the pattern, um, <clears throat> what I get is a graph that looks like this. Starting from the origin, I get a line that goes up and to the right. And I get a line going from the origin up and to the left. And that is the shape of just a plain absolute value function. Now, <clears throat> that notice the only problem, the only math I'm doing in this function is the absolute value. But what if I wanted to do more math to the function other than just take the absolute value of x? What if I wanted to change, change the... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. If I wanted to change this absolute value function by plugging some numbers in other than just plain x, <coughs> well, let's take a look at the next idea, and that's called the transformations <coughs> of my absolute value function or of the parent function. Notice that in this equation, I've got f of x equals a times the absolute value of x minus a plus k. Notice that instead of just having an absolute value of x in here, I now have an h subtracted from that x. I have an a in front of the absolute values, and I have a k that's added or subtracted or that's added at the end here. Well, by <coughs> putting numbers in, in for a, h, and k, this will change the shape of that v. All right. And again, don't forget the word transformation just means how things are changed. All right, you're changing. So, the first thing is, let's take a look at the parts of an absolute value function. The first thing I want to point out is that <clears throat> where this V originates, right here, that, that point is actually called the vertex. Okay? Well, if I want to change the vertex from the origin to some other point on the graph, then I will use this H and K value. The H will come out of there, and the K will come out of there to create a new ordered pair that will create your vertex, H comma K. All right? So instead of the origin being at 0, 0, or the vertex being at 0, 0, the vertex will now be at whatever these points H, K, this point H comma K is. <clears throat> Notice, H changes signs when it comes in and out of the equation. However, K stays the same. Okay? I'll discuss that more when we get more into transformations of the function. All right, now the next thing is that we want to take a look at is <clears throat> other than
than the vertex, I really only have two pieces here, two lines, right? Well, again, since the vertex is on both lines, the other thing I want to focus on is just the slope of each line. Well, <clears throat> the slope of the current line is positive 1. I go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1 each time. So my slope of this normal line is 1. Well, what if I wanted to change this V so that it becomes maybe a little bit more narrow, such as that? Or maybe wider, such as this, right? How can I do that? <clears throat> By just changing the equation. Well, that's where the value A comes in. This number that's in front of this A, or in front of the absolute value, this number A, he'll come out, and we're going to use him to create the slope of my line. Now, here's the rule. If A is a positive number, then I will count up and to the right from the vertex to create a second point other than the vertex. If A is a negative, I have to count down and to the right from the vertex to create my second point. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at one more important characteristic of an absolute value function, and that's the idea of something called symmetry. Okay? Symmetry means that the right half of the graph looks identical to the left half of the graph. If I actually drew an imaginary line <clears throat> straight down the middle, I would see that this right half could fold directly over and match up with this left half. Yeah? Well, every absolute value graph, or V, has, has to have symmetry. Okay? So, if you let it make sense, if the right half of the graph has a slope of up one, right one, then to create my symmetry, if I start from the vertex, I could be able to go up one and left one. Okay? Well, with that in mind, then to create a third point on my graph, other than just the vertex and the, <coughs> the, using the slope to create my second point, I can now the idea, use the idea of symmetry to create the left half of the graph. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. I have on the board f of x equals 2x minus, f, 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3. I want to graph him out. Okay, now just so that we can see what was going on here, let me split the screen here. Okay, so the first thing I have to find on here is, well, according to this, <coughs> my vertex should be at the point 1 comma 3. Notice how I changed the sign of that 1 when I brought him out, and the 3 stayed the same. So my vertex should be right 1 and up 3. And now I need the slope. My slope of my absolute value graph is the 2. Well, 2 as a fraction is 2 over 1, which helps me figure out my rise and my run. From here, from this vertex, I'm just going to go up 2 units, 1, 2, and right 1, since it's a positive slope. Now, <clears throat> that will create the right half of my graph. But because of symmetry, I should be able to count up two units, but instead of going right, go left. The same number of units, and that creates the left half of the graph. Let's do this one more time. Again, my vertex is, think about it, good, negative 2 comma 4. So I'm going to go left 2 and up 4 units, so there's my vertex, and my slope is, huh, wait, shouldn't there be a number in front of that absolute value? All I see is that negative. But don't forget that negative <coughs> uh, um, ones can be invisible through multiplication. My slope is actually a negative one, so that's negative one over one. Now, here's where absolute value graphs are different from regular graphs. Since my slope is negative, I have no option but to count down one and right one. I am not allowed to use the idea of giving the negative to the bottom number. I have now developed the right side of my graph. I now need to use symmetry to create the left half. From here, I'm going to go down one and left one, and that creates the second half of my graph. Notice 
if my slope is a negative number, I should get an upside down V every time. Now, I've got one more idea for you. Because of the idea of symmetry being so important to help me graph, I need to really focus on that line that I was using to create my symmetry. This vertical line right here that I drew is an important line. Notice it's a vertical line. This line is known as the axis of symmetry. Notice that he must go through the vertex. If he doesn't go through the vertex, he wouldn't be an axis of symmetry, right? By the way, just FYI, this word axis is just a synonym for the word line. Okay? This axis of symmetry will always be x equals whatever the <coughs> h of the vertex is. So, because it has to go through the vertex. Right? So, going back to these last two problems, if I want to know my axis of symmetry for these two v's, the first one would be x equals 1, and the second one would be x equals, that's right, negative 2. And there is <coughs> uh, the axis of symmetry. Well, I hope that helps. And I will talk to you guys uh, in class.